Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Uh, today I would like to talk about dependence between random variables and actually about how to measure the degree of that dependence. So we all know about independent variables and now we'll talk about some measurement of their dependence if it exists. Um, basically the purpose is more for statistical reasons uh, but I will address that in the statistics course. Uh, right now I'm talking only about dependence and the measurement of this dependence from a uh, theory of probabilities standpoint. Um, this lecture is part of the um, advanced math course for teenagers and high school students. I present this course on unizor.com. I suggest you to um, watch this lecture from this website because it has um, notes for each lecture and for registered students there is a whole educational process um, which can be engaged upon um, using uh, enrollment and exams. All right, so back to dependence and independence. Um, all right, so we are talking about dependence or independence between random variables, so let's just introduce a couple of random variables. Um, so how do we do it? Well, first of all, to introduce any kind of a random variable, we have to provide, if you remember, the probability space which contains certain elementary events and the probability measures associated with each elementary event. And now we need the second probability space which has other elementary events and uh, the corresponding probability measurements associated with each event. Now, for each uh, elementary event uh, there is a function which basically takes some, re uh, some um, numerical value. In this case I call it C, in this case I call it eta. And it takes certain values on each elementary event. So the value of this function on element EI is equal to XI and the probability of this is equal to PI. Similarly, random variable eta on elementary event FJ takes value YJ and the probability of this is equal to QJ. Now this is letter Y, not, not Greek letter Phi. Okay, so let's forget about probability spaces. We don't really need them anymore, just for a definition. So we have two random variables, C and eta. This one takes uh, m different or not different doesn't really matter element or uh, um, values uh, which I called x1 etc xm and the probability um, of uh, each is equal to pi and uh, random variable eta takes values yj where j is from 1 to n and the corresponding probability q j okay so, fine, we have our random variables, we don't need any more our probability spaces that don't really participate in any further explanation. It's just to make you a little bit more aware about back to what is random variable, right? Now, first of all, let's concentrate on independence. What are um, what uh, random variables are called independent in this particular case. So these we have two random variables. When can I say that they, that they are independent? Well, here is the definition. If conditional probability of Xi to take some value Xi under condition that eta already took some value Yj 
if it's equal to unconditional probability of xi to be xi for any index i from 1 to m and index j from a, uh, 1 to n if this is true so conditional probability under condition that eta took some value is equal to unconditional probability well that actually means that there is no dependency between them so it doesn't matter what eta took what kind of uh, value eta took uh, probability of xi to take any particular value is exactly the same so that's independence well that's great and let me just remind you a couple of properties of independence which will be used in this lecture in one or another form well first of all we have the property which I would call symmetry if C is independent of eta and this is the definition then eta is independent of C it can be proven it was proven during the corresponding lecture when I was talking about independence so basically it means that the probability of eta to take value yj under condition that xi has already taken some value x um, i is exactly the same as unconditional probability of eta to take value yj so this follows from this now another thing which is also following is that probability of simultaneously taking um, certain values and eta to take value yj is equal to the product of these probabilities multiplied by probability of eta to take yj This has already been again proven before. I'm not going to prove it right now, but, uh, but I just want to mention the property of independent variables. This is only for independent variables, obviously. The probability of simultaneously taking some values is equal to the product of their uh, mm, probabilities. Like, for instance, if you have two dice, the probability to have let's say number two on the first and number I don't know, five on the second is the product of probability of um, the first one to take number two and the second one to take the number five because the first one the probability of simultaneously having two and five is basically one thirty six because there are all thirty six combinations the probability of each is one six so one six times one six is one thirty six right okay and the third one which I also has um, I also have proven this um, it, it, it has been proven in one of the previous lectures that mathematical expectation of two uh, of the product of two independent variables very important independent variables is equal to the product of their mathematical expectation by the way, the corresponding theorem about the sum of two uh, random variables does not depend on whether they are dependent or independent, but the product, the mathematical expectation of the product equals to the product of uh, expectations only for independent. The theorem was proven only for independent. Well, it doesn't mean that it's impossible to have dependent variables with the same property, but this is kind of an, you know, it, it, it happens, but it's not really something which is true always. With independent, it's always um, true. And obviously, if this is not true, it means they're not independent, right? All right, so these are properties which we will be using in uh, further research in this lecture. And I would like you just to point, uh, I would like to point out these properties. They exist, and we will be using them. Okay, next. Next, I would like to talk about dependent variables. And what's very important is that the last property which I was just talking about, that the mathematical expectation of the product 
of two random variables equals to the product of mathematical expectations. This is actually the base for measuring the dependency between them. Because if there is a difference between uh, expectation of the product and product of expectations, then this difference actually signifies that there is certain degree of dependency. And the greater this difference is, the greater uh, dependency we assume supposed to be between these random variables. So, um, to make it a little bit more concrete, I would introduce something which is called covariance. Covariance between uh, two random variables is equal to it's a multiplication of their deviations from their average values averaged. So we take, first of all, we centralize our random variables. So the mathematical expectation of the centralized variables is zero, right? Mathematical expectation of xi minus mathematical expectation of xi as a, as a new random variable has expectation zero, obviously, right? Because this is a constant. Now, we multiply them, and I would like to take mathematical expectation of the new random variable which I, which I have formed. And let me explain you why this is a good measure of dependency. Um, let's just open all the parentheses here. What happens here? We will have E, mathematical expectation of C times eta minus C times expectation of eta, which is a constant, by the way, right? Minus eta expectation of C and plus expectation of C times expectation of eta equals. Now, these are random variables. This is the product of our random variables. This is the product of our random variables and the constant, which happens to be expectation of another one. Similarly, this, and this is just a constant. All right, so mathematical expectation of a sum always equals to sum of mathematical expectations, regardless of dependency. Remember that. So it would be E C times eta minus mathematical expectation of this. Since this is a constant, I can take it out from the expectation, right? Remember, expectation of C times constant is equal to constant times expectation of C, right? That's the property of mathematical expectations. So E of eta goes out and remains E of xi minus here. Same thing here. E of xi goes out and remains E of eta. And plus this. Mathematical expectation of the constant is this constant itself. So what do we have here? That's what we have. Only these two members remain. I just flipped them. Now, what is this? Well, remember, for independent random variables, this is equal to this, which means the whole thing is equal to zero. So this is basically a very significant fact. It tells us that covariance between two independent variables is zero, which is a good sign that this is a, a good measure. Well, let's talk about this particular thing um, uh, and uh, apply it to other examples of dependent, in this case, variables. So let me just rewrite this thing here. It's, it, it looks simpler than original definition, but they are absolutely equivalent. 
whatever I just wrote before as a definition and whatever I have derived as this property is completely equivalent okay so we will use this form of the definition which is exactly equivalent to the original one and let's examine how this particular uh, uh, definition of the covariance acts in certain dependent cases okay what is ultimate dependency between two different random variables well that's ultimate dependency if random variable eta is exactly the same as C which means it's defined on exactly the same probability space it takes exactly the same values for each elementary event with exactly the same probability so they are obviously dependent as soon as C takes some value xi eta takes exactly the same value xi and the probability of this event is exactly the same so they are ultimately dependent on each other so let's see how this particular covariance would work in this particular case. So covariance of Xi and Xi. What is it? This is Xi square minus F of Xi. Which is what? That's variance of Xi. Right? Remember? Variance of Xi is average square of deviation, right? Remember? Variance of Xi is equal average of square deviation of Xi from its uh, from, its, uh, from its expectation which is equal to the square minus 2 xi e of xi plus e square of xi right? and which is equal to e of xi square minus 2 and this is the constant, so it goes outside of the and times this one plus e square of c. Now this is minus two e square, and this is plus, so it would be e of c square minus e square of c, which is exactly this. So this is variance. You know that. Okay, so we have actually established that the variance uh, is the covariance of any random variable with itself. Okay, what is a little bit different example of very, very rigid correlation between Xi and eta? What if eta is equal to some constant multiplied by value of xi? It's exactly the same type of rigid relationship between xi and eta as this one, because the value of xi 100% defines the value of eta. You just multiply it by a. That's the only difference with this one. So let's see what co co covariance will be in this case. Covariance xi and a xi equals 2. We will use this so I will have E of AC square, right? Minus A of C and again I mean E of C and and A times E of C. So minus A 
e square of xi, right? Which is equal to what? This is a constant goes out, and I have this, and this is again variance, right? So in this case, I have a times variance. Now, this is very interesting because I can actually have A positive or negative. If A is positive, let's say it's equal to 1, all right? I will have exactly the same as this one. If A is negative, let's say minus 1, I will have minus variance. Now, what minus means uh, in case of covariance? Well, if this is minus 1, then whenever C goes up, eta goes down right so the covariance also has absolute value of the variance of xi but the sign will be plus one or minus sign depending on plus or minus sign we have here so whenever we go together xi and eta the variance is equal the, the covariance is equal to variance whenever they go in opposite direction covariance is equal to minus variance so which seems to be reasonable right when one goes up another goes down it's reasonable to expect that the measure of their dependency is negative, right? So they go to different direction, but very synchronously. And that means that their covariance is negative. It's a natural thing. So, so what do we have right now? We have the covariance of two independent variables is equal to zero, which is good. Covariance with uh, a random variable with itself is equal to some positive constant and covariance with minus itself is negative constant which has exactly the same absolute value so that's reasonable now would you expect if our relationship not is, is not that rigid I mean there is a re relationship but not as rigid as in these two cases then the covariance should be well slightly less than let, let's say this one right but it's too, it should be positive if we go up synchronously and it, 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 it should be negative if we go down synchronously, right? That seems to be reasonable. So let's just take one particular example. Uh, I, ha uh, I, I call it half dependency. And here is what it is. Example of covariance between C And let's assume we have two different variables, xi and xi prime, which are independent, that's very important, independent, and identically distributed. Now, what I will do is, I would like to establish the covariance between xi and, and this variable, which is partially xi, half of this variable, if you wish, is xi. And half of this, this is borrowed from a completely independent variable which is distributed identically to xi. Well, covariance between xi and xi prime obviously is, is zero, as we know, because they are independent, as I said. But what, if the, what is the covariance between xi and this variable, which took half of the value from xi itself, so there is a dependency, and half of the value from independent of uh, fr from C variable. Let's examine in this particular case. So, covariance between C and C plus C prime divided by 2. It's equal to, so, first of all, we have their multiplication, which is C square plus C C prime over 2, right? That's their multiplication. Minus, minus product of their expectations. Now, what is this? One half goes out. Then we have a sum of two different random variables, 
uh, expectation of the sum is sum of expectation. So I will have E of C square plus E of this product. Now, the product is a product of two independent variables because that's our definition in the very beginning. We took C and C prime as independent variables. And the expectation of the product of two independent variables equals two product of their expectations. So that's why I can write it this way. Minus. Again, one half goes out, so I can actually retain this, and I will continue in my square brackets. Now, um, after one half goes out, I have uh, e of c times e of c, because this is the sum of expectation of sum is sum of expectation, so minus e of c square, right? And minus product of expectations of c times expectation of c prime. <coughs> now, let's think about it. What is expectation of c prime? Well, I said that C and C prime are independent and identically distributed. If they are identically distributed, their expectation is exactly the same. So this is exactly the same as E square of C. And this is minus E square of C. And this is again minus. So basically, I have one, two, three exactly equivalent um, terms, but one is with a plus and two others with a minus. So I can actually reduce this thing and what do I have remaining? I have this covariance is equal to one half. And what's in the parentheses? In the, in the square brackets. This is a square bracket. So what's in the square bracket? Uh, expectation of a square minus square of expectation, which is again variance. So now, look at this interesting phenomenon. My variables, xi and xi, uh, and xi plus xi prime over 2, are, as I said, half-dependent, right? Because the, this variable took half of its value from the xi and, and half from some other independent variables. So it's less dependency than, let's say, in this case, when, xi, when eta took all the values from, from, from xi and they are absolutely in sync. So my covariance is reduced by half. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> half of the dependency results in half of the covariance. So that all makes sense. Well, obviously, if I will take something like minus uh, or plus, uh, if I will have minus C plus C prime, it would be minus here. So again, it will be, if, it, if it's in a different direction, it will be, again, half of this, but with a minus sign. So, all I'm, all I'm saying is that this coefficient of covariance has, um, has a very meaningful, actually, applications. It's really measuring how uh, well or how much um, one random variable is dependent on another. One more step, and we will finish this. The step is, you see, this is dependent on the variance. I think it's very interesting to have a measure which is um, uh, uh, concentrated, let's say, from minus 1 to 1, with 0 being the measure of independent uh, 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 variables. Now, 1 in cases like this, and minus 1 in case of I put minus here and minus here. So, it would be interesting to have this measure, and if it's a half of something, so it will be somewhere between minus one and one, depending on direction. If, it's, if one goes up, then another goes relatively up, more or less, and one, and for, for positive, and if one goes up and another goes down, that it would be negative. So we are looking for a measure like this. How can I actually uh, change my definition of this dependency from covariance to something else, which would be better to correspond um, my desire to have the measure between minus one and one as the 
dependency, with one and minus one being the maximum dependency, positive or negative, and zero being basically a measure of independent variables. Well, it's very simple, actually. We introduce new We introduce new coefficient, we will call it coefficient of correlation R, which is equal to covariance of divided by square root of multiplication of their variances. So what I'm saying is that this measure is, um, there is a term normalized, we are kind of reduced this uh, using the scaling factor. This is a scaling factor. So my coefficient of correlation would not be dependent on variances, but would be dependent only on really dependency. So it's a good measure of dependency, which is completely not unrelated to um, how far our variables are spread relative to some middle value, some ever average value. Now, let me just um, exemplify this uh, in all these cases which I have just considered before. Case number one, when they are independent. What will be with their uh, correlation? Well, if they are independent, the covariance would be equal to zero, so that's why the whole thing is zero, so we have achieved our point. Independent variables have zero correlation. That's good. Now, let's talk about dependent variable. Let's examine, uh, that's eta. This is a very rigid dependency with some coefficient a. Now, what happens in this case? Well, we know that covariance is equal to A variance C, right? Now, the bottom would be square root of variance C times variance A C. Now, what is the variance of A times C? Well, you remember that whenever you have a variance uh, of the constant multiplied by random variable, um, you can actually take it out, but in a square, because the variance is actually an average of a square deviation. So whenever you're squaring, that would be equal to A variance of C divided by A square variance of C square, right? Variance of C and another variance of C, that's variance of C square, and A goes out in a square. Now, what is this? Well, variance is positive, right? So I can always say that the square root of variance square is equal to variance. What is the square root of A square? Well, if anybody tells me it's A, <laughs> that's wrong, <laughs> because it's absolute value of A. This is arithmetic square root, which means it's always positive. Now, A can be positive or negative, right? So that's why we have to put the absolute value. So what's the result for real random variables with, vari with variance not equal to zero? We can cancel this one, and what's remaining? A divided by absolute value of A. And I would like to talk about this for a couple of seconds. So covariance divided by, so correlation of C and AC is equal to A divided by absolute value of A. Now, what is this? What is absolute value of A? Well, considering A is not equal to zero, obviously. Now, what is absolute value of A? For positive A, it's exactly the same as A, right? 
So I will have a divided by a for a greater than 0, which is 1. For negative a, if a is negative, absolute value is positive, right? So we will have um, minus, if you wish, a divided by a, which is equal to minus 1. This is for a negative. This is a positive. So, for this type of dependency, my correlation coefficient is either 1 or minus 1, depending on the sign of A, which is absolutely reasonable. If A is positive, they go up together, up or down together, doesn't really matter. If um, A is negative, they always go to the opposite direction, and that's why the coefficient of correlation is minus 1. So it's a good measure in this very, very rigid dependency. And my last example, when we will have half dependency, as I call it, that's a little bit more interesting. So what would you expect the correlation would be? Well, if you think it's one half, that's incorrect. <laughs> but very close, actually. So uh, correlation between C and C plus C prime divided by 2, where C prime is independent of C and identically distributed. So, that's very simple. On the top, I have one half of variance, remember? Of C. We just did it. On the bottom, I have square root of variance of C. Now, what is variance of this guy? Well, you remember, if you have a coefficient, some kind of a factor, you can take it out from the variance, but in a square, right? Now, then you have variance of a sum of two independent variables. Variables, if they are independent, then, then, then sum of their variance is equal to, variance of their sum is equal to sum of their variance. Always important is that they are independent. This theorem is only for independent variables. It's like, um, multiplication. Whenever you have expectation of product is equal to product of expectation only for independent. Same thing with variance. Variance of sum is equal to sum of variances only for independent variables. So if I have sum of these two variables and I have variance of their sum, so it's sum of their var variances, and they are identically distributed, so each is exactly the same variance and is equal to variance of C. So I have two variances of C. Now, obviously the variance is positive, so this would reduce. So I will have one half divided by square root of one half, which is equal to, one goes here, which is equal to square root of two over two. So, again, it's a good measure in this case it's a positive. Now, if we had some negative, for instance, it would be negative. But in any case, it's something between... Now, the square root of 2 is 1.4 something, so it's 0 0.7. So it's not exactly one half. It's more than one half. But anyway, it's a meaningful um, measure of the dependency between this and this. So, my purpose was to introduce this particular, um, this particular uh, coefficient. It's uh, called coefficient of correlation. Covariance, by the way, is just a way to introduce the correlation. So I was talking about correlation. That's my main goal. I have introduced this as a measure of dependency between random variables. And as a side note, um, obviously this is not very much used in, well, theory of probabilities per se. This is just an apparatus which is used in statistics because in statistics we can um, have something which is called a sample correlation. And the sample correlation, when we don't really know whether two different random variables are or are not related to each other, are or, no, or are not dependent on each other, and to check whether there is such a dependency or not, we will use the correlation between them, which we can statistically evaluate. And if we are very close to zero, 
whenever we are calculating the calculation the the um, correlation then the chances are these variables are relatively independent if there is a strong correlation which is close to one or close to minus one for instance we need uh, this correlation between let's say a drug which we are applying to treat some illness and the final result whether the person gets better or not so that's the most important factor the correlation between application of drugs and whether the person gets better if there is such a correlation if it's a, if it's a strong correlation closer to one that means the drug is working okay that's it for today thank you very much and good luck